Hi everyone, welcome to Cyber Attacks and Defense class. Today we will go over the course intro and then I will let you know how you can get on board uh, to the assignment server and scoring system. The goal of this course is to learn about how cyber attacks work at the very low level, at the assembly level. This would be totally different than what you have experienced in other classes at OSU because we will do reverse engineering, which let us understanding, uh, let us understand what the program is doing even without having the source code. And this skill is an essential skill to hack the programs. To give an idea, what we will do looks like the following. On the right side, uh, you can see the, a disassembler that shows the binary program in Intel x86 assembly, uh, which looks very esoteric. And on the left side, you can see the screen of GDB with an extension that shows the runtime CPU register state, assembly code that the CPU currently runs, uh, stack state, and other information such as a uh, stack backtrace. You may have no idea about what's going on in this screen, but please do not worry about this because we will learn how to use such tools and interpret this kind of the esoteric assembly code in the first three weeks. Getting back to the course description, this class is comprised of two parts, lecture and exercise. In the lecture, uh, the video like this, uh, I will deliver high-level concepts about how a tax works with diagrams, with figures, uh, interactively uh, on the slides. And in the exercises, uh, I will demonstrate some of the tutorials and you will learn the attack in very detail at the assembly level by solving many hands-on micro assignments. In summary, you can learn how to do reverse engineering, binary program analysis, writing exploits, patching vulnerabilities, and other uh, skills related to the binary program hacking in this class. Another goal of this class is to make you guys ready to uh, work on job uh, and participate in some cybersecurity competitions. Some of you have already know that, Oregon State University uh, won the NSA Code Breaker Challenge in 2018. We topped in the nation. Our student security club, OSUSAC, is very active in participating in cybersecurity competitions, so they won many cybersecurity competition awards from Department of Energy or other institutions. So after finishing this class, you will be very confident in solving challenges in such cybersecurity competitions because the assignments are very similar to that of challenges in such competitions. And doing well in such thing will let you get a security job easily uh, because doing well in cybersecurity competition is something like a, you proved uh, your skills, cyber ninja skills in such competitions and uh, many employers would like to hire such cyber hackers for the, their security jobs. Lastly, uh, this photo is photo of me here in the middle uh, when I won the DEFCON CTF final in 2018. Yes, I'm the world champion in hacking competitions and am here to teach you to have fun with such competitions and challenges. Next, uh, these are useful links for the class. And the first line, uh, can.unexploitable.systems, uh, we will use this as a course website so you can see the course rules, general information, schedules, uh, basically the course syllabus at this website. And my name is uh, Yangjun Jang, uh, just call me Yangjun on Discord or like in, the, in Zoom. Uh, I'll be teaching this class and we have a TA uh, who previously nailed down all the challenges and uh, experienced uh, many hacking competitions uh, with OSUSEC, uh, Philip Mestas. Uh, you can reach out to Philip via Discord link below. Next, uh, this is the link uh, CTF that unexplodable the systems. Uh, this is the link to the scoring system that we will use. 
and I will explain uh, on how you can register yourself uh, to this website uh, later in the later part of this this video. And we have Piazza to handle questions, uh, your questions uh, synchronously, and have a Discord server to handle your question interactively. So please register yourself to Piazza and Discord and the scoring system by following the, some of the tutorials in the video. We have 10 weeks scheduled for this class. So for the, for the first three weeks, uh, we will cover the preliminary skills, uh, learn about the base, basic reverse engineering and shellcode writing to get familiar with the x86 assembly from week two, one to three. Next, we will learn exploited writing. Uh, you will hack the binary program by exploiting vulnerabilities in the challenges from week three to week eight. Finally, uh, we will also cover some more advanced stuff in week 9 and 10. It's for how, uh, knowing about how to defend against uh, some of the attacks that we learned and also how to avoid modern defenses. And these will be delivered via around a 50-minute lecture and tutorial videos and one-hour interactive exercise and Q&A session via Zoom. Uh, all the videos will be released on the YouTube, but the, all the links will be posted on the Canvas and our course website. And we will also have a 1.5 hours, one and a half hour office hour on Wednesday uh, with me. And myself and TA will be available on Discord like this for helping you. So please get on the Discord and then ask questions if you have any. So the lecture video will be posted as a YouTube links and you can see the information in uh, the slides and the video uh, on the course schedule web page. So you can visit this website yeah. and uh, all the tutorials, slides, video links and then some of the reading materials uh, will be announced on the each cell of the, uh, the class. And both exercises and Q&A will be done via Zoom and the links will be posted on Canvas later, starting from Thursday. Next is about grading. This class will get your grade 100% from lab assignment submissions, which means that there will be no midterm and nor no final. But that being said, the assignments will be difficult. So Please take this message in my rate, one of my rate, my professor rating uh, from a student who took, the, who took this class in 2019, saying that this class is very challenging. Um, there is no midterms and no final. Yeah, but that means like uh, you need to keep track of the assignment very well with the schedule to get a good grade. But most importantly, uh, the materials are difficult, but Myself and TA Philip will provide good resources and help you uh, help to rescue you guys from the valley of the segmentation fault. Uh, you will see lots of segmentation fault uh, while you are solving the challenges and you could be frustrated, but uh, we will be on Discord and use Piazza and uh, all the uh, by all means to help you guys. And I tentatively have the plan to get the letter grade of yours with the following scheme. Uh, the graduate student will have a higher bar, uh, about 5% more, to get the same grade with the uh, undergraduate students. So yeah, there will be a little higher bar for the grad students. Uh, but this could be changed. But if change happens, the bar can only be lowered. So uh, the actual grading will not be difficult, uh, harsh uh, than this one. For the assignments, uh, there will be around 10 challenges per week like this. Uh, so for week one, we have uh, 10 uh, challenges from level zero to level nine. Uh, and I have planned to have around 90 challenges uh, in total uh, throughout this uh, term. And for each week, I would like to cover uh, two to three challenges via tutorial video exercise so you can get somewhat free answer for those two, three ones if you follow the class video conscientiously. 
So for week one, we have 10 challenges, but don't worry, they are due on the two weeks, in two weeks, uh, April 13th. So you will have two weeks to finish those 10 challenges. And next is about the scoring system. We have an automatic scoring system at the CTF that unexploitable the systems. Uh, please go to this website and register yourself by using a dot at oregonstate.edu email address. Uh, any email address other than the oregonstate.edu will not work, so make sure to use that. And you can put any name to the username, but please use a politically correct username. Uh, I will not allow any kind of the insult or like some of the bad words. Uh, if I found that, then I will block the username and then uh, ask you ask one to change the. Uh, the username so uh, it's okay to like the making some of the fun username like a cyber ninja or a super hacker or something like that but uh, please be politically correct and after the registration you will get the confirmation email so please check your email address after the registration After you log into the system for the sanity check, uh, please submit the flag of the login check. Uh, uh, this is a test challenge, so please submit the flag for the login check. All the answers will be tagged with the canned uh, braces, and like this, canned hack the planet. So you can uh, copy and paste the entire, uh, starting from canned to the until the the ending braces, and put that flag in the flag. Uh, form and click the submit. Then the dark green one will turn to the green after you pass the correct answer. In using this kind of the automatic grading systems, we have some rules. Uh, please do not share your code or flags directly with other students. Uh, I encourage students to discuss each other for the high-level ideas or some of the method on how to get the final solution, but please do that in natural language, not in code. Yeah. So it's okay to like chat over the Discord or like to share something on the Piazza about like the how uh, your ideas on like the uh, how to exploit the vulnerability or how to get the flag, but uh, please do not describe that in code. Uh, and for assignment solve a sentence check, uh, I will require some write-up about the challenge solutions starting from week two. The same rule applies, so please do not copy other students' uh, write-up. And if you have collaborators, uh, please mention the name of them in your write-up. And please make sure that, that there's a no write-up requirement for the week one challenges. So uh, this kind of the write-up requirement will start from week two. And all the assignments will have fixed due dates, uh, and you will get 50% points of the assignments for the late submissions, but the late submissions are allowed up to seven days of delay. And any submissions after seven, de seven days of the delay uh, will get zero point, so please keep up with the schedule. And uh, I'm sure that uh, there is uh, no one, uh, no beavers uh, who make uh, who attempt it plagiarism, but if detected any plagiarism, uh, I will follow the official university guideline to punish the plagiarism, so please do not attempt. So, you hackers, disobeying uh, computer codes are okay in this class, but not for their written rules and laws. And if you do not submit any challenges for a week, uh, you will get F. And this is for like the making students do minimal work for the class to following the uh, schedule. Uh, and so please make sure to submit at least one flag per each week. Uh, this is quite easy because uh, we will have a video tutorials to get somewhat free answers by just following the instructions in the videos. So yeah, so the, for the most of the students, like this will not be the difficult job. And I would like to give some of the tips to tackle uh, uh, assignments uh, and to ease your burden uh, on the assignments because we will have lots of uh, micro assignments in this class. So please study in group. I know you guys can't meet, cannot meet in this uh, coronavirus during this coronavirus pandemic, 
but please use Discord Piazza Zoom to interact with myself, TAs, and the other students, uh, do discussions about the challenge. That will make uh, save your time uh, to solve some of the challenges. And please do not miss the lecture and tutorial videos, which will be released on every Tuesday and Thursday, and tackle challenges in order, because I intentionally designed to order those uh, challenges in increasing difficulty. And in solving challenges, uh, ask questions proactively. Sometimes one challenge may consume up to 20 hours to solve if you work alone. Yeah, please understand your time budget. You cannot work more than like 40 hours or like the um, yeah working on uh, one challenge more than 30 hours a week. Yeah, will devastating all the like the, your academic progress. Yeah, I do not wish you to have like such frustration. So please understand your time budget. And if you can solve one after putting like four to five hours, then please ask for help. And we will use GDB, Pawn Tools, Python, x86 assembly and uh, Vim or other editors a lot. So please get familiar with those tools as soon as possible. And that will save your time. And the final remark before the getting the registration done is to note that we are learning hacking in this class, which may be a good skill to the world and community, but it could be a bad skill uh, if the hacking harms the others. So we must conduct ethical hacking. So please do not attack other systems that the systems that I created and prepared for you, such as VMCTF 1, 2, and 3. If you find any vulnerabilities in such servers and other, uh, other than the challenges, uh, please let me know. I reserve some extra credit points uh, for this. For example, if you can the, get the root privilege on the server and get all the solutions, uh, please let me know. Also, we are sharing the server with the other students, so please uh, do not attack other students. An easy attack on the server is launching a denial of server serv denial of service attack. For example, something like this, uh, fork bomb like this. Uh, please do not do this. Uh, if you do that, then like uh, any uh, nobody can log into the system. So I need to go to the server room and then uh, turn off the machine and turn on again. Yeah. Next is the final step for registering your account to the challenge server. So we previously handled the registration, registering yourself to the scoring system, and this is for registering yourself to the challenge server. Uh, to do this, I highly recommend you to get on the flip server first because all the assignment servers are behind the OSU firewall, so you need to get on the OSU VPN if you are not hopping from the flip server. So I highly recommend that you log in first to the flip server and then log into the uh, our VMCTF, uh, the challenge server uh, from there. Uh, to get on the flip server, uh, you may run the SSH, SSH command on Mac OS or Linux or on Windows, you can use PuTTY or Mobile Xterm or whatever the terminal software to get on the flip server. So you can get on the flip uh, by uh, by using this kind of command and then you can see this kind of screen. Next, after you get on the flip server, uh, we require you to submit your SSH public key corresponds to your private key. Uh, if you know about like the how to use public and private key and then if you have any existing one, then you can skip this step and just reuse uh, exist your existing uh, SSH public key. But if you don't know what it is, or if you do not have any, then you can create one by running this command, ssh-keygen-t ecdsa, then it will generate a one for you. Uh, if you run this command on flip, you will see the screen like this. And for the directory to store the key, if you don't know what this means, then just press enter. Then it will store the key on the default location and after you finish this kind of the execution then you need to copy out your public key 
uh, you can do that by running the following command on the screen cat tilde slash dot ssh slash id underscore ecdsa dot pub then you will see the entire public key then please copy the entire text starting from ecdsa to dot edu the entire this text because you need to submit that on the scoring server. After copying this text, please go to the, the scoring server, the ctf.unexploitable.systems. Then on the top bar, you can see the account menu. Then you can see this kind of form. Then uh, you can choose any kind of the preferred username on the server. Uh, it's better to have use the same username of the, on the flip. Uh, because that will make your login easy yeah and then like you can paste SSH public key here yeah like this and then click submit then after waiting uh, around 10 seconds you will see the register OK message on the website yeah then please try to log in to the server via SSH command. So on the flip server, after seeing register OK, you can use SSH command uh, username at vmctf1.ecs.organstate.edu. For example, if you set your username as a white9057, then the command will be SSH white9057 at vms-ctf1.ecs.organstate.edu. So you need to put your username at here. Yeah. Then you should see something like this. So you can get on the server and uh, having the shell on the server. If you cannot get to the screen, then please let me know over the Discord or ask questions on to the TA or post questions to the Piazza. And for week one, uh, starting Thursday, uh, we will learn about basic reverse engineering. Uh, we will learn about translating x86 assembly into readable C-like pseudocode to understand what the program is doing. Uh, to start with that, you can run command on the vmctf1 server, the command fetch week one. Then it will create a challenge directories under your current directory and you may start playing with these assignments uh, from now on, although we will cover challenges starting from the next class. Although uh, we uh, the uh, 10 assignments were released today, uh, these are uh, due in two weeks on uh, April 13th. So please take the time to solve the challenges and follow the lecture videos released in the following classes. Uh, please have fun with that and uh, please finish uh, registration step uh, today. Thank you.